after a series of military defeats and setbacks for the Donetsk and Luhansk separatists, who united under the banner of Novorossiya, a term Russian President Vladimir Putin used to describe southeastern Ukraine, Russia dispatched what it called the humanitarian convoy of trucks across the Russo-Ukrainian border in mid-August 2014. Ukraine reacted to the move by calling it a direct invasion. Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council published a report on the number and contents of these convoys, claiming they were arriving almost daily in November, up to nine convoys on 30th of November, and their contents were mainly arms and ammunition. In early August, according to Igor Strelkov, Russian servicemen, supposedly on vacation from the army, began to arrive in Donbas. By August 2014, the Ukrainian anti-terrorist operation was able to vastly shrink the territory under the control of the pro-Russian forces, and came close to regaining control of the Russo-Ukrainian border. Igor Gurkin urged Russian military intervention, and said that the combat inexperience of his irregular forces, along with recruitment difficulties amongst the local population in Donetsk Oblast, had caused the setbacks. He addressed Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying that, Losing this war on the territory that President Vladimir Putin personally named New Russia would threaten the Kremlin's power and, personally, the power of the president. In response to the deteriorating situation in the Donbas, Russia abandoned its hybrid approach, and began a conventional invasion of the region. The first sign of this invasion was August 25, 2014 capture of a group of Russian paratroopers on active service in Ukrainian territory by the Ukrainian Security Service, SBU. The SBU released photographs of them, and their names. On the following day, the Russian Defense Ministry said these soldiers had crossed the border by accident. According to Nikolai Mitrokin's estimates, by mid-August 2014 during the Battle of Ilovaysk, there were between 20,000 and 25,000 troops fighting in the Donbas on the separatist side, and only between 40% and 45% were locals. On August 24, 2014, Umbrisivka was occupied by Russian paratroopers, supported by 250 armored vehicles and artillery pieces. The same day, President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko referred to the anti-terrorist operation, ATO, as Ukraine's patriotic war of 2014 and a war against external aggression. Ten Russian paratroopers of the 331st Guards Airborne Regiment, Military Unit 71211 from Kostroma, were captured in Jirkalny that day a village near Mbrisavka, 20 kilometers, 12 miles, from the border, after their armored vehicles were hit by Ukrainian artillery. On 25th of August, the Security Service of Ukraine reported the capture of paratroopers who claimed they'd crossed Ukrainian border by accident in the night of 23rd of August. The SBU also released their photos and names. The next day, the Russian Ministry of Defense said that they had the 76th Guards Air Assault Division based in Piskov allegedly entered Ukrainian territory in August and engaged in a skirmish near Luhansk, suffering 80 dead. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry said that they had seized two of the unit's armored vehicles near Luhansk city, and reported about another three tanks and two armored vehicles of pro-Russian forces destroyed in other regions. The Russian government denied the skirmish took place but on 18th of August, the 76th Guards Air Assault Division was awarded the Order of Suvorov, one of Russia's highest awards, by Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Shuigu for the successful completion of military missions and courage and heroism. Russian media highlighted that the medal is awarded exclusively for combat operations and reported that a large number of soldiers from this division had died in Ukraine just days before, but their burials were conducted in secret. Some Russian media, such as Peskovskaya Gubernia, reported that Russian paratroopers might have been killed in Ukraine. Journalists traveled to Peskov, the reported burial location of the troops, to investigate. Multiple reporters said they had been attacked or threatened there, and that the attackers erased several camera memory cards. Peskovskaya Gubernia revealed transcripts of phone conversations between Russian soldiers being treated in a Peskov hospital for wounds received while fighting in Ukraine. The soldiers reveal that they were sent to the war, but told by their officers that they were going on an exercise. The Speaker of Russia's Upper House of Parliament and Russian state television channels acknowledge that Russian soldiers entered Ukraine, but referred to them as volunteers. A reporter for Novaya Gazeta, an opposition newspaper in Russia, stated that the Russian military leadership paid soldiers to resign their commissions and fight in Ukraine in the early summer of 2014, and then began ordering soldiers into Ukraine. This reporter mentioned knowledge of at least one case when soldiers who refused were threatened with prosecution.
Russian opposition MP Lev Schlossberg made similar statements, although he said combatants from his country are regular Russian troops, disguised as units of the DPR and LPR. In early September 2014, Russian state owned television channels reported on the funerals of Russian soldiers who had died in Ukraine during the war in Donbas, but described them as volunteers fighting for the Russian world. Valentina Matvienko, a top politician in the ruling United Russia Party, also praised volunteers fighting in our fraternal nation, referring to Ukraine. Russian state television for the first time showed the funeral of a soldier killed fighting in East Ukraine. State-controlled TV station Channel 1 showed the burial of paratrooper Anatoly Trivkin in the central Russian city of Kostroma. The broadcaster said Trivkin had not told his wife or commanders about his decision to fight alongside pro-Russiary.